we set out to achieve. So let's look at our uh, both our regional economy and our city or Chennai surroundings, our state, Tamil Nadu and our country. Three levels we look at. If you look back to what 1982-83 when this institution was founded, I remember it, I was very much a student. I finished my plus two in 1985. I entered AIT Madras. At that time in entire Tamil Nadu there were only about six or seven engineering colleges and this is one of the newer, one of the three, first three uh, coming up in the newer colleges. There were maybe six or seven in the government sector then and just then the government was opening up engineering education to the private sector. At that time, the entire state only had maybe about three or four thousand engineering seats. And uh, this was we're talking about 1982-83. Today, this institution alone is admitting of that number. It tells you the tremendous growth we have achieved in this. And in parallel with that is what how the economy of our region and economy of our state and all of southern India and of course India itself they have all grown together in this this growth in engineering graduates and to put this growth in perspective in 1989 our GDP per capita of India was about 300 dollars 300 US dollars today is over about 2000 dollars so over six, seven times growth we have achieved. If you look at our state alone, our per capita GDP will be about 3,000 to 3,500 dollars. So we've grown about 10 times in the last 30 plus years, 20 years, 10 times. If we keep up this growth rate in the next 30 years, we will reach the ranks of the developed world, developed countries. We will be considered one of the richer countries in the world if we can keep up this growth over the next five years. In fact, today the Chennai region alone would not be considered a poor nation anymore. We would be considered more of a middle income, lower middle income nation. That's the level we have come to. And the critical question for us is how do we go grow the next 10 x which is what will put us in the Singapore or Kuala Lumpur, Dubai and London, all those places. Those are considered developed today. How do we reach them? The last uh, 30 years we got to one level. How do we get to the next next? So that is the challenge, that is the future we have to engineer together. It's primarily I see it as an engineering technology challenge not merely an economic challenge. And let me explain why I see it as an engineering and technology challenge. We, the early stage, when you look at our 1985 economy, broadly it was very much an agricultural dependent economy. We repeat this story a hundred times, thousand times, for us to become fully developed. So, to be fully developed, we need to harvest and retain our own brains to work for our region, our nation. That's the first step. It's the brain capacity of the In order to do that successfully, we have to also take up challenging projects. It's both good call it two-sided problem. That is, how do you engage and employ your own talented people? Second, how do we create all the technologies we ourselves want to consume? And I talked about the talent that we are creating in our country. Even today, so much of the talent is leaving our shores. That is the reality of our country. Still, so much of our talent we create is going abroad. So how do we retain the talent? The second equal part of that is how do we create the technologies that we need for our nation. And the technologies you don't, you don't have to go very far. Look at the camera there, look at the camera, look at this mic I'm speaking in, take your look at your phone. Almost none of the critical technologies in these are made in India. 
none of the critical technologies. You buy a good washing machine at home, you look at the critical components, we lack the know-how to do that. The LED lights, most of them are LED here, the LED drivers, the chips, they are not made in India. So, with so many engineering graduates we produce, our state alone, more than 2 lakh engineers are coming out every year. And these engineers are working on all these complex technologies, but they are not working in India often. When somebody works on very complex technology, most often they are doing the work program. Crescent School of Pharmacy, School of Computer, Information and Mathematical Sciences, School of Electrical and Communication Sciences, School of Infrastructure, School of Life Sciences, School of Mechanical Sciences, School of Physical and Chemical Sciences, and School of Social Sciences and Humanities of B.S. Abdul Rahman Crescent Institute of Science and Technology who have been certified after examination to be duly qualified to have secured first rank in their respective programs to receive the gold medals, rank and degree certificates. School of Arabic and Islamic Studies Master of Arts in Islamic Studies Nurul Habib Bachelor of Arts in Islamic Studies, Shamshia Bey. <laughs> Bachelor of Design, Interior Architecture, Saumya. Crescent School of Business, Master of Business Administration, Salma Postgraduate Diploma in Management, Uma Maheshwari. School of Computer, Information and Mathematical Sciences, Master of Computer Applications, Abhishek. Master of Science in Actuarial Science, Asano Rahma. Bachelor of Technology in Information Technology, Varun Kumar. Bachelor of Computer Applications in Cloud Technology and Information Security, Swati. Bachelor of Computer Applications in Data Science, Ritika. Bachelor of Science in Computer Science, Chandrasekhar. Thank you. Bachelor of Technology in Electronics and Communication Engineering, Mohammed Mizdahullah Shri. Bachelor of Technology in Electronics. School of Life Sciences, Master of Technology in Biotechnology, Shabnam Aminuddin.
Bachelor of Science in Biotechnology, Insha Mishra. School of Mechanical Science. School of Physical and Chemical Sciences, Master of Science in Chemistry, Venkat Raman. Mr. Venkat Raman. Master of Science in Physics, Paradaradhan.